Welcome back to the vlog. This is Every Day, and I'm going to get back to Every Day. It's been difficult for me writing books and doing a lot of other things, but I really want to commit to doing a daily video again. So I am going to start from this day forward. I'm going to work my very best to give you something, even if it's just something small, and even if it's from wherever I happen to be, because I'm going to be all over the place in the coming weeks. Okay, I want to talk about disqualification, and it's something that salespeople don't do enough of. And as I'm finishing writing Eat Their Lunch, my third book, I, I sort of go into this kind of concept and I want to share it with you because it's important. And then we'll talk about disqualification more generally. But one of the things that I recognize that salespeople don't recognize when they're sitting with their prospective clients is how much we're connected to the idea of pain or dissatisfaction and how we get bamboozled into nightmare clients because they complain and gripe about our competitor, the competitor we're trying to displace. And they'll say, oh, they're terrible. They never do what we want. They never hit our metrics. They're constantly a problem. Their service is terrible. They're not very helpful. They go through the whole litany of complaints. And as a salesperson, you're like at the edge of your seat. You're like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. I've got somebody who's completely dissatisfied and they're motivated to change. But you also have to remember that your competitor is probably smart. They've probably been working with this company for a long time. They may have told them, look, in order for us to get you a better result, we're picking up our end of the stick, but your end of the stick is still on the ground and I need you to pick up your end of the stick and make the changes on your side in order to produce these results. And I'm telling you this because if you don't have this conversation, if you don't say, these are the changes that are gonna be necessary on your side, then you're not being a trusted advisor and you're not being consultative and you're afraid of having this conversation because what you're afraid will happen is they'll say, listen, if you can't do a better job than them, we'll just stay where we are. But doing a better job means convincing them that they have to change things on their side of the table. You can't do it alone. You gotta have a willing partner that's gonna make the changes on their side. And I'm just telling you this as a caution. The more vigorously that someone talks bad about your competitor, the more likely it is that there's fault on their side that they're not acknowledging and they want to say, it's not us, it's somebody else. And whenever anyone tells you that they don't have part of the responsibility for an outcome they're getting or not getting, then you know you're working with someone who doesn't have a very mature view of how things work. That's number one. I want to give you a couple other ideas about disqualification because salespeople make this mistake all the time. They engage with people who can't or won't buy. One of the two, they can't buy or they won't buy. So let's talk about won't buy. That's a perception of value. No matter how good your product is, no matter how much better you can do for them, there are some prospective clients who just will not see value in what you do. They won't find your differentiation to be compelling. They won't want to pay more for an offering even if it gets them a better result. They just don't perceive the value. And I'm not telling you to just give up and go away, but if you reach three or four stakeholders and that's their model of the world, that's their view, then you have to recognize, look, if they're never gonna be willing to pay for this and you have the conversation, I'm not saying don't try them again in the future, but don't waste your time with someone who doesn't perceive value in what you do because you can't sell them. They're difficult to sell, it takes a long time, and you'll end up with something in your pipeline that you pretend is an opportunity that never comes true. So that's the first one, there's no perception of value. Some people just don't have the money. That's all there is to it. They desperately want what you can do. They'd be happy to invest it if they had the money. They would be a great partner if they were able to spend money that they don't have, but they don't have the money. And when they don't have the money, they can't buy from you. It's not that they won't buy from you like a perception of value. They literally don't have the money. You have to disqualify them. And I wanna give you another concept around disqualification. If somebody doesn't buy what you sell and it's not strategic for them, then there's no reason to try to convert the unconverted while you have people who are already spending a fortune in your category that you should be calling on your dream client. So you should disqualify people who don't buy what you sell because they don't buy what you sell. And I always hear salespeople say, well, you know what? If we showed them the value here, they would buy it. No, they wouldn't. They don't see value in it, they wouldn't buy it. Hmm, I'm gonna let this call go. That's a decline right now. Because I'm talking to you, I can't take this call but I am looking at notes, so I've got the phone right here, uh, only because I have four bullet points and I didn't miss, want to miss one. All right, here's the thing. The last one is nightmare clients, and you know who they are. They're the difficult clients, they're hard to work with, they won't treat you like a partner, they don't treat their current provider like a partner, 
They're not going to be helpful in any way in the relationship. Everything that goes wrong is going to be your fault. They're not going to want to take any responsibility for the relationship. And when you recognize that it's a nightmare client, you have to move on and you have to do something else. Because what will happen is that you get wound up with this group of people. They take all of your time. They take all of your energy. They destroy your operations team. They take all of their love of the game out of the game for them. And then you end up with a bunch of problems. So listen, when you look at the client or the prospect that you're talking to, look at them through this lens early on and decide, is this someone that I should be pursuing? Are they going to make a good client for us? Are we going to make a good partner for them? Do they have the money? Do they perceive the value? Are they going to make the changes on their side? And if they're not going to do any of those things, if they can't or if they won't, then you have to disqualify them and move on and find something better to do with your time. There are plenty of clients who need your help. Your job is to go find them. That means you make outbound calls and you do the work. All right, a couple updates real quick. We have seven copies left of the planner, the first version of the planner. There was only 100 of them made, but I found out we got a few extras. So we have seven copies of that. It's a subscription model. There's three books. There's a planner. There's an outbound planner. And there's a pad for your 90-minute blocks. Check it out at b2bsalestoolkit.com. And we are about a week away from launching the training center, which has right now got 33 courses and 450 chapters within those courses with quizzes for sales managers and salespeople alike. That's at b2bsalestraining.com. So if you're interested in training and if you want the program that we call Coach, which is really 108 chapters on how to handle every objection or concern that a client gives you, that's just one of the programs. Uh, go there and check it out. Make sure that you give us your name and we'll reach out to you so you can get a look at this thing. Now, I'm going to get this right this time because I haven't done this right for so long. Like the video and then share the video with someone who needs it. Look at somebody who's got things in their pipeline that just don't belong there that they should be disqualifying and let them take a look at this. And then hit the subscribe button. This is every day.